Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's a cold, blustery, but sunny day here in Eastern Oregon today. We have highs in the 60s headed our direction and I'm so looking forward to that. That's gonna be really nice. It will be nice. It is nice in the greenhouse right now though. I thought, yeah. you know, since the sun is coming out like peeking from behind the clouds here and there, I might as well go check what the temperature is in the greenhouse. 91 degrees in there. <laughs> it's like, oh, so I've got the door propped open and we've got the door propped open here too. So there it goes. It must be coming There's the from, gust. It feels like it's coming kind of from the north a little like bit. Like northwest, northwest maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like laying the arbs. So the arbs are going like yeah. this. I don't I don't like wind. I can take pretty much anything but wind. Ugh. We were given such a gift of a non-windy spring last year. I was kind of hoping we would have another one. We typically have windy, windy springs. So this is what I'm used to. <laughs> used to. I don't think we have anything to talk about. Nope, so we can just right jump questions. right into the videos. So the first one we did this last week was uh, planting a vertical herb garden plus shopping for herbs. So we started that project off down at the garden center because they had just received a brand new truck, a brand new truck, a truck full of brand new plants from Blooming Nursery. And they do such a fantastic job growing their plants and they grow them cold, which means they don't grow them in a heated greenhouse. So a lot of them are prepared, like they're tough, they are almost ready to be planted out. We had, after that shipment came in, I think we had a couple nights that were like mid twenties. I probably wouldn't throw them out without cover in that sort of situation. But at this point, I mean, I think we're cruising up above freezing and maybe hovering right around, but they're fine to go out. Uh, but they have a program called Herborama uh, that my mom has done or taken part in the last several years. And it's just, they've got tons of herbs, tons. And so uh, we were able to pick out 30, different herbs to put in our green stock vertical garden, which is what we did. And then I also picked out some, a couple perennials and ground covers in addition to the herbs and brought those home as well. But uh, the main goal was to find the herbs for the vertical garden and get them uh, planted up. So it's fun and they're doing really well. I actually went and uh, cut some thyme off of the narrow leaf French, I think thyme variety. And I uh, used it when I stuffed my chicken the other night. Um, some rosemary and the thyme, it was delicious. Uh, Jenny said, out of curiosity, how much does a green stock full of soil weigh? You know, I did look that up at one time. So in the original that we have, those tiers weigh, it, it varies, you know, if it's dry soil, wet soil, so, you know, give or take, but right around 30 pounds. And in the leaf of variety, the leaf, um, what word am I looking for? Planter? The leaf planter, which is a little bit more of a shallow reservoir, those weigh right around 23 pounds when they're full. Lindsay French said, I love your channel and watch it constantly with my family. Thank you for that. We really appreciate that. How do you, uh, how do these green stock containers do outside in your high wind area? We'd love to get one, but also have quite a bit of wind. Okay, so we have had two we've left outside. Uh, last spring, I planted up the strawberry planter right out in the middle of our driveway. And how long did it sit out there? Long time. A long time before we put it in the greenhouse and it's not protected really by anything out there never a problem. The other time we had a green stock, it was the first time we planted one up. It was that tan colored mm -hmm. one. And I don't, there's probably a different name for that Maybe color. Stone. stone. Uh, anyway, we had it planted with super tunias mm -hmm. back behind the gazebo when we had the gazebo back there. Uh, and that one was a little bit more protected, but nothing ever happened to that one either. So in my experience, and we can get some pretty high winds here, like gusts 60, 70 miles an hour. Um, I've not had a problem, not to say that it couldn't, but they're pretty heavy. If they're watered, you know, and they're all, all those layers are sitting on top of one another, I think it would take quite a lot to push it over. Linda said, how do you keep weeds out of your greenhouse? I have gravel in mind, but it seems I'm always pulling some weeds up. So when we excavated that area to get it ready for the greenhouse, it was lawn back there. And oh my goodness, we rented a sod lifter. We did it by hand. <sighs> you know, I was going through old hard drives this last week mm -hmm. and I ran across that GoPro footage of oh, us. You did. Like it was like hours and hours of GoPro footage of you and I taking out the lawn, like before we knew anything about equipment, instead of renting a skid steer to take it out, mm -hmm. we were like, oh, we'll just rent a sod lifter. No big like, deal. Idiots. Oh, that was such a dumb idea and so much work. There I mean, cheaper, I guess, if you're, if well, you're you renting a, a sod lifter. Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of time. Because if you rented a skid steer, you could get it done in like two hours. Yeah. But instead, it took us a couple days. Do you think it would even take two hours? Not with a skilled skid steer driver. Yeah, maybe with a skilled one. Yeah. Probably a lot less. 
anyway, it was a lot of work. After we did that, we lifted all the sod and got rid of it. We actually found it a new home. All the sod we've removed, pretty much. We roll mm -hmm. it up and people come get it. Um, but we laid down the DeWitt Pro Landscape fabric and then put gravel on top. So that's helped with the bulk of our weeds because I knew that in that situation in particular that we weren't going to be moving the greenhouse. That's going to be there for hopefully ever. Um, and I didn't want to have to spray. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't want to have to spray in there when I've got, you know, seedlings and other plants don't want to spray your besides and I don't want to hand pull them because I don't have time for that. Um, now at this point, because we've been doing so much gardening in there, you know, seed starting, repotting soil falls to the floor, you know, we deal with a little bit of weeds in there, but not many at all. In fact, right now we've got some little violas that have seeded themselves underneath the table where I must have had some flats of violas and they're so sweet. We leave them alone and let them bloom in there. But we don't have a huge problem. The biggest time we had weeds was when I did the wheat grass, the wheat grass for the oh, chickens, yeah. and oh, we that's had right. yeah. And uh, I think I spilled some of the wheat grass, see, like the wheat seed on the ground, and we had quite the crop for a little bit. Jolie said, "Which green stock should I buy for my daughter? With a bottom roll, uh, which bottom roller to move? It is the best, and I can't find just the cap cover. Is this only for herb growing? You can grow whatever you want in there, ish." I mean, you can grow flowers, you can grow herbs, you can go a lot, grow a lot of vegetables and strawberries. Um, you know, you wouldn't, you can even grow some root vegetables. I've grown carrots in there. Um, I grew little baby cabbages that were really fun. I've grown uh, radishes. You wouldn't be able to do a, something like, I don't know. I mean, I suppose a person could do potatoes. They would, <laughs> they might be misshapen or like they'd fill up a whole, a whole pocket. tier. Like not just pocket. Yeah. Like a whole tier. Because some potatoes, I'll get like massive amount. Well, some plants I'll get like might... two and some plants I'll get, you know, 10. Yeah. Nice size potatoes work, or more. It could. Yeah. I just haven't ever done it. That would be an interesting experiment. But, you know, you couldn't grow like corn. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Um, smaller crop sort of things. The uh, w mover with the wheels on the bottom. Is there more than one style? I thought there was just the one. Yeah, I think that there's like a spinner maybe that doesn't have... I'm not positive. You just have to check on the website. Yeah. Gardenanswer.com. And I know that the lid comes with the watering system because you don't really need a lid unless you have the watering system. Right. Unless you just like the look of having a lid. Well, there's some security. I wonder if they would ever consider selling that as just a separate uh, accessory because there's some like it feels good to know that if the wind's blowing and there's junk blowing around in the air that it can't get in there and possibly like create a layer because that reservoir at the top is your watering reservoir for that top layer yeah. planted layer but you're watering it by hand you're well, every day and so you're already you, there anyway when you're kind of short <laughs> I suppose, like five yeah. four i'm five four and i'm still like huh, you know trying to look sure. down in there so, you know, I could see that it might be a little hard for somebody who's a little shorter than I am. Yeah. I, I can reach up in there and I know most of you guys can reach up in there and, and um, kind of clean it out if you need to, but it would be hard if you were shorter than me to see it, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. I kind of like the finished look of the cap being there, but the drawback to that is if you're hand watering it, it's really hard to see where your water level is because you water to a certain level and then you stop, Yeah, you know? So, I don't know. Which one to buy for your daughter? It depends on what kind of space she has um, because there is the leaf type that has the smaller reservoir on it. I like the original because it's deeper and I feel like it's more versatile for my my usage, I guess. But everybody has a different use for it. So, there you go. Jennifer said, are you able to plant the thyme and the other herbs now? We are in Meridian. I thought it was too early. Uh, if you're in Meridian, which is just outside of Boise, so not very far from us, I would probably think in the next week or two, you would be you would be safe. I mean, thyme is a tough plant, but if you get it that has been grown on more than say a thyme that you would have outside right now, uh, chances are if you have a really cold night and it's not protected, it could sustain a little bit of damage. It probably wouldn't kill the plant, uh, but I would maybe give it just a, a little time. The other perennials and ground covers I bought that day, I haven't planted out yet. Mark said, how do you get the scratch? How'd you get the scratch on your arm? One of the cats, so sorry. Uh, no, that would be rose pruning because I wear those gloves and my hands are fine, but my arms sometimes get snagged. You'd full gauntlets. Yeah, I don't remember the last time when I've been scratched by one of the cats. It's been a while. Deb said, how do the herbs in the greenhouse get enough sun? Obviously it works for you, but don't they need full sun? 
Uh, by the way, uh, you are awesome. I'm watching your videos and I love the cats. Thank you. Uh, they get a lot of sun in that greenhouse. I think whatever sun they get in there is full sun. I mean, it's diffused a little bit by the plastic. Yeah, it's two but... layers of um, like six mil plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they get a lot of light. And I grow seeds in there, like start seeds in trays. And they're nice, compact you know, stocky plants. They don't get leggy or stretched like they do even in a windowsill. So they get a lot of light in there. Laura said, how much soil do you use per level? I just ordered one, so excited. Oh, I'm excited for you. Um, so the Espoma soil I was using, those are one cubic foot bags. So it takes one full one plus a tiny bit of a second bag to fill one tier. So that would be five full bags. I would probably plan on six bags total, maybe seven to be like seven cubic feet. To be safe, it probably tells us on the website. Maybe I could Google that. Each tier holds one cubic foot of potting mix. <laughs> Mine hold a little bit more than that. Um, each leaf tier holds 0.75 cubic feet of potting mix. Yep, mine definitely, I used more than one per tier. So plan for extra. You'll always use the soil for something else. Or I, I, I don't know, that's me. <laughs> I will always use the soil for something else. Better to over prepare. Next video was picking up evergreens and hydrangeas and making ivy topiaries with my mom. So we started off the day in Boise. Mm -hmm. uh, we picked up some spring grove arborvitas. We saw those there last fall or like late fall, I think. And we decided, well, we'll just leave them here. I doubt anybody's going to buy them between now and then and now in the winter time um, and let them take care of them. Yeah. And we'll pick them up later when we're sort of ready to plant. So we picked up some of those, some North Pole arbs that are huge. And then they had three limelight prime hydrangeas that I needed to finish off the hedge in the south garden. And then when we got back home, I loaded up all the extra ivy that I had in the greenhouse. And I loaded up, I had hangers, all the wire hangers. I raided yours and my closet to get enough. And I took them down to the garden center and my mom and I, I made um, ivy topiaries out of all the rest of those ivy. So Becky said, love it when you spend time with your mom and Aaron. As for topiaries, can you also make it out of pothos or other similar vines? Absolutely. Halloween Home Haunter said, I always hear that you love every plant while shopping, which sounds like me. Are there plant shrubs and trees that you don't like at all? That I don't like at all. It's hard to make a sweeping, like, I hate this plant. I've heard but. you say there's certain plants that you kind of like lose some interest in, but mm -hmm. not dislike. Um, one that I can think of is like dinner plate hibiscus. Yeah, yeah. Like sure. you've kind of, you've liked it and then have been like, nah, I don't really like it. Mm -hmm. and, eh, they're okay. And mm -hmm. um, Spirea is another one that yeah. you're just kind of like, eh. eh Pontia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I used to hate alliums. The big, like really? big purple alliums. And now I think they're whimsical and kind of magical. And I think they're beautiful. My only complaint with alliums is that they don't last long enough. There's a lot of things like that in the garden though, but that makes them so special. I suppose. Yeah. Because you know it's, it's short-lived. It's fleeting, so you just have to really enjoy it. Yeah, but even like the, okay, so dinner plate hibiscus. I think that was the f first plant I ever picked out to put in my own pot, like in our, after we were married. Mm -hmm. We had a pot on our driveway, and I put one of the old varieties, so the old scrubby looking ones. They're better now. Um, they're more full and dense and, uh, the flowers are more uniformly spread and they bloom a lot more, but I put one of the old varieties of bright red <laughs> in front of our house. And it was the messiest, like worst plant to put in a pot as like a thriller. Ugh. I just think back of that and then, oh my goodness. You don't like a uh, hot, hot red. No. In the garden. So any plant that's just a like a real... Well, just because I like the color fine. And I like seeing it on other people's gardens where it matches their color palette. But my eye just kind of is drawn towards something softer now. So I like soft, you know, yellows and pinks and purples, blues, um, peach kind of mm -hmm. apricot colors. And when you put a red in there, it's like, oop, it's just a little bit much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I can't really think off the top of my head if there's anything that I just like, ooh, you know. Yeah hate sweet gum no i like sweet gum so i just i was pointing a sweet gum out to aaron last night we were downtown boise walking around and we saw all those little balls on the ground and i told him that's what we have to look forward to yeah from the one that we have out in our dirt lands oak trees i love i love oh no the brown oak trees but i love oak trees i just yeah. wish that some of them didn't hold their leaves maybe that's what it is with plants there's like certain things certain attributes about some plants that are less than desirable. Yeah. 
black walnut. What do you not like about those? Uh, isn't it tough to grow underneath oh, them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is tough to grow under those. Uh, Shelby said, those are fantastic. I love the sage green, sage green pots the best. The yellow green with the blue green is glorious. What type of ivy did you use? Is it gold child? I have one that is a perfect candidate to form. Um, it's a proven winners or proven accents rather ivy called. Is it yellow ripple? Mm, is that a thing? Yellow ripple. Yep. Highland Golden Doodles said, what do you use to control for spider mites on your ivy topiaries? Those are darling, darling. Um, you know what? We are going to be getting heavier into biologicals this year. In fact, I just had a conversation with uh, the rep for the company that sells them um, that we bought from last year. They came and it, the drone company is different from the the company that the, the uh, beneficial insects come from. So they kind of got together and figured out a way that they could apply using the drone. So we're gonna do that again this year and that's what we're doing. It's a type of predatory mite. What's the name of it? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's like a little white mite that actually feeds on thrips and it feeds on the two spotted spider mite. And you can get them, uh, we're gonna get some slow release packs this year that you hang um, in the area, like on the plants and oh. they slowly come out and take care of any problem. And then I think we're gonna also do an overhead application again this year. Hmm. And I'm gonna put some packets in the greenhouse. We don't have any problem right now. Uh, if I use a spray, that's a really hard one. We haven't sprayed for mites in a long time. Um, I did a video about it, about spider mites. Maybe we can link that down below. I feel yeah. like getting into that conversation right now would be a long one. So we'll link that video down below and maybe you can check that out. There's a whole bunch of different uh, suggestions in there, uh, organic and synthetic. Debbie said, since your dad's name is Michael and your brother's name is Joseph, where does the name Andrews come from? From the original owner who was Al Andrews. He started the company in 1917. Yeah. 1917 he moved it to the location it's at currently in 1923 so it's been at that location for 100 years and then um so al andrews and then it was john stubstead who like really took my dad under his wing and then it was dave pohemus and my dad mike um so my dad's technically like the fourth full owner, I guess, of the company. My, my parents are both. So Mrs. Debbie said as to why you don't order the Arborvitas through your parents' garden center, because we don't know where they got them. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we've never seen those available on any of the order sheets. I try to get as much as I can through my parents' garden center, uh, first, because you know, it's, it's obviously the easiest way to go about it. However, like Dennis at Far West, um, the people at Edwards Greenhouse in Boise, we picked up some plants from them this morning uh, from Proven Winners. Like it was just this whole, like with <laughs> it all worked out that way. Everyone is super, super helpful to us and we're so thankful for that. Um, but yeah, we've never seen them available that big. You know, every garden center has kind of a little bit of a different shtick. Mm -hmm. Um, some cater like really heavily to landscapers. Your parents sell to landscapers, but that's definitely not their thing. Mm -hmm. Um, they just sell to the you general know, public, the general public mm -hmm. more than anything else. So, and your parents are also extremely limited on space. Yeah. Um, they, they're in That's kind a of a huge part of it. They're in a downtown type scenario mm -hmm. where they only have, I mean, they have a lot of space, but not in comparison to some other garden centers. Right. Like when we go to Jaker, you know, their lot is what, like oh, geez, I asked 40 once. acres or something like that. Yeah, it's big. So like the, the size of things that Jaker brings in mm -hmm. versus the size of things that your parents can bring in, they're just different and they, yeah. they cater to different customers. Yeah. Um, so anyway, all that to say that like the growers that other garden centers get things from are not necessarily the same growers that your parents get things from mm -hmm. because they're trying to hit different audiences. And right. I that. think people like Far West, they have their own landscaping division, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So like they, they go out and plant a lot of the things that they bring in, which is really cool. Kay said, these are beautiful and I so want to try. Unfortunately, I'm not very creative. Where do you, uh, where do you place them? So I have one in, uh, the Hartley. I have one in the two in the greenhouse so far. <laughs> I only have, so I kept two that I made and then I kept one that I bought. I gave one that I bought away and then I gave all the rest of the ivies away. Um, so I have three currently. So I basically have one in the Hartley and one as a backup <laughs> in the greenhouse, in the variegated, in the yellow ripple. And then the one that I put in that kind of Eastery display in that box, um, that one is a green, an all green variety. Also Kay said, can I dig ivy from my yard and accomplish, accomplish the same? Absolutely. Next video is making a high impact arrangement for a school fundraiser. And this was such a fun project because it, for a fundraiser, you kind of want whatever you put together to be high impact. 
Yeah. You know, you want it to be like kind of over the top. Pack that thing full of plants. It was so fun. Not so, a weed in there. Not a weed, not a weed in sight. So Bethany, who works for, for us, her son's school, her son Alex's school was having a fundraiser that had a silent auction and a live auction. And they had gathered up, up a bunch of different donations. And so that was ours. I went down to the garden center and I picked out that green pot. I just thought that was so pretty. That color of green is just so soothing and it's just so spring and eastery looking. And then I picked out some plants to go in it and I already had some in the greenhouse as well. And then pop some uh, black cat pussy willow branches in to kind of top the whole thing off. So I just walked you guys through the process. Like that was the project, which felt kind of weird. I think I even said in the beginning, like this is what all I intend to do this afternoon. Like we're just gonna take this slow and enjoy it. And it really was a pleasure um, to be out there doing that. So, and it brought in $475, yeah, which was way more than all the stuff that went into it. So I was really happy about that. Um, of Avade, of, of, of Avade, Avade said, uh, that is a really beautiful container and plant arrangement. I'm always amazed at the number of plants you get to fit into your pots. Not sure if it is mentioned, but what is the size of the container? Was, was there a matching saucer? The auction at the end was a fun surprise. That's the other thing. Bethany took some video when they yeah. were doing the live auction and that was at the end of the video. There was no matching saucer that went with it. There were different sizes though. I picked the largest of the three. I wanted whatever pot I chose to be manageable weight wise. I didn't want to get something that somebody needed a dolly or needed several guys to move. Um, I needed to be something that was manageable. And I think the opening, I wanna say maybe it was 18, 20 inches maybe. But that would be my guess, I didn't measure it. Carrie Anderson said, is it true that most tulips don't rebloom year after year? A lot of them will, but a lot of them will not. It kind of depends on your climate, how cold it gets, how much sun they got. I know like even for our daffodils, which daffodils are really good at naturalizing and coming back year after year, but if they don't get enough sun to recharge their bulb, they might just come up with leaves and not bloom for you, which is kind of the case under our maple tree kind of area. Mm -hmm. They've come up just a tiny bit weaker every year, still really thick because we planted so many. Um, but I noticed there's like a few, little bit fewer blooms every year. And I think it's because they just simply do not get enough sun there. But hey, if we can plant them and enjoy them for like five, six, seven years in a spot, I'm good with that. Uh, tulips are not very, some tulips are not very good at coming back at all. When I planted those labella pock tulips, so beautiful, oh, so bad at coming back, so bad. The Averons, hmm, so, so, better than the labels for sure. Uh, it's kind of trial and error. We planted the Vidal mix um, from Color Blends. It's like an all white blend and that one's still coming back pretty strong. We also planted a mix up front. Do you remember which what that was called, Pinotage? Oh, maybe. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. It's a mix of like purples and pinks. That's probably the strongest blend of tulips and white cubed. That mix. Menton. So, Menton is Has good. been coming back. Yeah. In the South Garden. Um, Cafe Noir, not very great. Um, the mix I planted behind the chicken coop did not come back super strong. So it's just a trial and error. Um, sometimes you'll land on a good one and then they'll rename all the tulip varieties and market them as a different variety. Yeah. <laughs> not color blends, just the, the industry in general. Lee said, I love the container and the money it raised for the school. Curious, how long will the primrose bloom? It should bloom for a good portion of the season and there were new buds coming up too. So even if you know some of them need to be groomed off, they should enjoy a nice array of color, nice uh, display until it gets too hot. Warren said, so Laura, did you think that, that beautiful arrangement was going to go for 475? Nope. <laughs> I thought that that was amazing. I couldn't ask for better. W, um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the next part, but did you attend the entire event and bid on anything in the process or were you in attendance merely for the purpose of filming your spring arrangement? We were not able to make it. So we made the arrangement and Bethany got the footage for us. Teresa said, I can't believe how many plants fit in that pot. I know, I was kind of toward the end. I was like, is this too much? But they were fitting in with... It makes sense. You're trying to make an instant impact container for an event where, you know, yeah. you don't want to plant sparsely and then just tell people at the auction, oh, trust me, it'll grow in. Yeah, no, it needs to be like, boom, yeah. from the These gate. Look good. But spring arrangements, you can do that. Yeah, early yep. spring arrangements. Early spring arrangements. Well, spring arrangements that we are going to enjoy until May, like mid-May, we've got less than two months. They're not going to I outgrow their space. When you say spring arrangements, you mean an arrangement that is just for spring. Right. That is not 
to well, be because enjoyed a, in the summer. A lot of the spring stuff you plant that has color now will not have color through the summer yeah. because it can't ha- handle the heat or the full sun or whatever the case may be. So spring arrangements, you can absolutely plant that full. And they're meant to be sort of temporary arrangements to er- enjoy for a few months. And then we swap them out for summer stuff. It's um, I think what's confusing when I hear you say that is... Uh, I think in your mind, you're saying a spring arrangement is a spring arrangement that you make in spring and enjoy in spring. A summer arrangement is one that you make in spring and enjoy in summer. I, I suppose it's technically spring when we're planting those in May. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's, sometimes you even do the end of April if, if it's starting to warm up. Yeah. Which is, you know, fairly early. Our average last frost date is April 29th. Yeah. I looked it up. It used to be a little bit later than that. Okay, so next video is how to prune climbing roses. Something I needed to get out and do. So we pruned up the Colette climbing roses and I tried to be as concise as I could. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm watching the video back, I'm like, man, that was a lot of words. Yeah. Like, could I have condensed it? But I don't want to leave anything out, you sure. know, either. So I kind of broke it down into five steps, how I learned how to prune climbing roses. I don't necessarily follow the five step. I mean, I do, I follow the five steps, but I do them all at once when I'm out there pruning. And the more you prune climbing roses, the more confident you will start to feel and the more it'll just be like second nature and you can tackle something and know exactly what you're doing. But when I was learning, it was overwhelming to me and I thought that I was gonna hurt the plant somehow. I'm not really sure you can hurt a rose. Climbing roses especially, because yeah. I feel like climbing roses are kind of a different breed mm-hmm. of like, they grow a ton every year. Yes, they do. Well, our shrub roses, some of them die, like the um, all dressed up mm-hmm. every year, severe winter damage mm. every year, gorgeous plants and big, yeah, like good size. Oh, <laughs> uh, Smarita said, great information. I have a Peggy Martin. It's out of control. It's already leafed out. Can I still do this now in Texas? Yes, you absolutely can. Jackie said, uh, does it matter what time of year you can prune roses? You know, um, the best time of year to do it is when they're dormant because you can see what's going on better. And I think it's less shock on the plant also to do it when it's colder, when the plant isn't trying to, you know, the roots aren't trying to feed a bunch of foliar growth. Um, and it just, I don't know, I feel it, dormant pruning is usually when you're going to do a severe prune, um, definitely better to do it early. Uh, deadheading and things, that's kind of a different category. And then also like pruning off any wild branches that can be done at any time. TR4 la la la. What if you have a new climbing rose from last year and it, and it doesn't have any lateral canes? I only have canes that grew straight up. Just pick which ones you want to keep and just keep those, cut anything else out, and they should start producing some lateral canes for you. NABI said, I live in the Mediterranean region. Roses are evergreen here. Do I also need to remove the leaves? Won't that hurt the plant? You know, I would kind of follow what is going on in your area. I obviously don't live in the Mediterranean, so things are handled a little bit different here. Uh, here, You know, sometimes the roses will hold their leaves and some of them will hold them more than others and they look pretty good through the bulk of the winter. But if you're in an area that's susceptible to like black spot and powdery mildew and things like that and specific insects, uh, namely like thrips and spider mites, uh, getting rid of foliage is a really key part, a key step in getting rid of a lot of that, a lot of those sorts of issues. Sunny Sum said, my goodness, that Colette's become a beast. Yes, they have. How many years does it take for a climbing rose to that level of beastiness? They're six years old, and I think it took about three years to get to the level of beastiness. Yeah. I love seeing how these have evolved. I'd be interested to see how you go about trimming those on the obelisk. Same sort of situation. I just kind of train them around the outer part of the obelisk. That's the only difference. Shrevenata. These are, you guys... <laughs> These names are really hard to pronounce. This one's really long. Just a thought. Have you ever considered propagating the healthy stems like the one you chopped off at 1640 instead of discarding them? You know, I don't normally think about doing that. Yeah. It's a lot of, you know, it seems like a lot of work. It does. I mean, if I was going to propagate and um, try to perpetuate every plant that I trim, Oh, it would take so, so long. I mean, if Colette was no longer available, maybe I would think about it. I do or have propagated the fig cuttings and those propagate so easy, so, so easy. Um, I, so I propagated some, some branches last like late winter and they produced figs the same year. I was kind of proud of them. Yeah. Chrissy said, quick question. I have flower tone. Can I use that? That? Yes. 
And Holly Tone is on sale in our Costco now. What's the difference? Can I use this for my general flower use? You could pretty much use any tone on any plant you have and your plant will be better off. Kathy said, do you ever find boreholes in your rose canes or hydrangea branches? No, not yet. And the last video from this week was repotting African violets with care and propagation tips. So I had picked up a few beautiful violets down at my parents' garden center. They had just gotten a load in. Boy, it's a it's like a moth to a flame this time of year. Candyland. Oh, it is totally like Candyland. I mean, I want to go down there every other day because they're getting new stuff in every other day. And I just, I miss that part about being down there full time. Uh, you know, when I was working down there, it's just like a constant. It's electric in it, the spring. It, in it the is. Early spring. I mean, you guys know what it's like when you visit a garden center this time of year. It's just, oh. Anyway, so I picked those up. We got those all potted up into pretty pots. And then I showed you my propagation tray that I set up last fall and all the babies are just so pretty. And we got those potted up and I just talked through what I've learned, you know, growing violets through the years. But Katie Gray said, how long does it take to go from propagation to potting them up? And do they bloom the same color as the mother plant? I want to guess conservatively, but I want to say it's several months. I want to say anywhere between four and six months. It depends on how big you want to let the babies get. Um, I've only ever experienced them blooming the same color as like whatever plant the leaf came from. So yeah, the mother plant that they bloom the same color. Lily Faye said, I have an African violet that has been losing leaves from the bottom over the years. I groom them off when they die, but now I've got a long, almost stalk. The rest of the plant is perched on. Can I repot and bury the stalk? I've done that before. I'm not a expert African violet grower, uh, but I have buried buried the stock and they did the plant did beautifully. So I, the, if it was mine, that's what I would do with it. It could be a risk though. So if you lose your plant, don't blame me. <laughs> Miss Corgi said, what flowers are hanging in the window at 1115? Those are some purple status flowers. We put together an arrangement from some flowers I picked up at the grocery store. Oh boy, it's been a couple of months now. It was a winter project that we did in the Hartley and I didn't end up using those. And I thought, oh, they'd be so pretty in here. One to just hang here and look colorful, um, but I'm going to probably use those in a project here at some point. Cookie said, my violet leaves are dro drooping. Uh, am I over watering? How often do they bloom? Um, okay, so if the leaves are drooping, there could be several different things. It could be an underwatering issue, an overwatering issue, or a light issue. So you basically just need to start at the top of the list and address it. Like, is the soil super dry? Am I letting it dry out between watering too much? that could cause the droop. Am I watering too often? Is the soil soggy? That can cause them to droop and then the plant will start to rot. So, you know, check those things off the list. And if you feel like you're watering it the right amount, then it could be a, a light issue. They like bright indirect light. Um, if they don't get enough light, they will not bloom and their leaves will do weird stuff. Also, if they don't get the proper light to dark ratio, they will also stop, stop blooming. Um, so they need at least eight hours of dark in the night. So if you've got them like under a grow light situation, you'd want to run them for like 14 hours a day, the lights, and then have them shut off for 10 so that your plant was uh, exposed to dark. That's what uh, kind of spurs your plant on to, to bloom. So there's just all those different factors. It's hard to tell without like seeing the plant right in front of me. Loretta said, I've had an African violet plant for two years now and it's not, and it's yet to flower. What do you suggest I try? I would try making sure it has enough light for sure. Like during the day, make sure it has enough bright light. It's usually a light issue um, for the, the bloom. You could also feed it. You know, it could be that your plant just needs a little extra charge. So you might try some African violet food and see what happens. Nellie said, thank you so much for this video. I love them. You have given me the courage to put mine in pretty clay pots. When do you know it is time for a bigger pot? Um, usually I notice a plant starting to maybe struggle just a slight bit, or if it's put on a tremendous amount of growth, I'll pop it up out of the pot to look at its root system um, and determine whether or not it needs to be moved up. Kay Keenan said, question, is there a reason why you didn't pre-moisten the African violet soil? You know, the only time I usually pre-moisten soil is when I'm doing any kind of seed starting. That's typically the only time. I, I have pre-moistened when I bumped my geraniums up into bigger pots, but with African violets, I just pop them in and then water them normally. And you guys, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And I hope that we have a better weather week <laughs> this week. And I hope you all do well, too. Well, we should. I think we might be able to even do a little bit of planting. I think so. It begins. Spring yes. planting. Thanks again, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.